Oh my goodness, it is pouring down raining. <laughs> it is pouring down raining here in Virginia. Hello everybody. Today is a Thursday, April the 30th. Welcome to our live today. And if you're watching this on the replay, thank you so much for watching. We're going to be making the double V quilt block. This is going to be a 10 inch quilt block. It'll actually finish at 10 and a half by 10 and a half. The pieces are here on the screen for what you need to make the double V quilt block. This quilt block is very friendly to jelly rolls and to extra snippets of binding that you have left over. Yes, a very scrap friendly block. You're going to need two colors of fabric and uh, today I'm using yellow and green. Kind of reminds me of a John Deere quilt block. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hello. It is pouring down a raining. Hopefully, hopefully our internet stays nice and strong. Let's see. I'm trying to open up this video so that I can follow along in the chat with everybody. There we go. Hello. Thank you to my moderators. Thank you so much. Some days are easier than others, right? <laughs> sometimes our chat goes off without a hitch, and then sometimes y'all are really busy taking care of issues. Thank you so, so much. Helps me focus on my pieces and keeping the video going. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yes, it's raining. Pouring down raining and dark and gloomy outside. So if you have to leave before today's video is done, make sure you come back, <clears throat> pardon me, come back and skip to the end so that you can see the pieces if you want to head start on tomorrow's block. Tomorrow's block is pretty. Today's block should be nice and simple. Nice and simple for today. Yes, no half square triangles today. And I have some Christmas related this or that questions for today. So if you want to play along, feel free to do that. The main purpose of this video is for us to just uh, get our mind off of everything that's going on today. I have to go to the grocery store. Going to the grocery store is so weird right now. <laughs> I'm really hoping that the rain passes before I have to go. Because I really don't want to go to the grocery store in the first place. And then adding pouring down rain to the mix really makes me not want to go at all. Wow, record heat in Arizona, 104. My glory. That is hot. Hello, everybody. Hello. So yes, make sure you stick around to the end or you come back on the replay if you want to get a head start for tomorrow. So great to see you all. We're going to go ahead and dive right into today's block. You'll see I have my pieces right here on the board. Jackie, you're into simple. Well, you're in luck today. You're in luck today. Because, uh, for one, these pieces, because of the two and a half inch width, makes this quilt block really a jelly roll friendly, right? If you have a jelly roll and you're not sure what to make out of it, this quilt block lends perfectly for that. So we have a yellow and green. We have four pieces that are two and a half wa uh, inches wide and four and a half inches long four yellow and four green ones. Then we come down here and these pieces measure two and a half by two and a half and we need four yellow and a five green. Guess where, uh, guess what? <laughs> we don't have any pre-work to do before we can lay out this block. Nope, no pre-work. So let's go ahead and lay this block out. And with that, we can also start the this or that questions. They're all Christmas themed questions today. 
Doesn't it just seem like yesterday was Christmas? <laughs> Question number one. Decorating your Christmas tree. Do you use all white lights or do you use colored lights? All white lights or colored lights. The four yellow squares we're going to put in the four corners. Just like this and like that. This fabric is a yellow on yellow and it's really hard to tell which side is the right side up. <laughs> then we have five green squares. We're going to lay them right next to our yellow. Just like this. And then one of them goes right in the middle. Then we're going to take our yellow two and a half by four inch pieces and those go right in the middle of our block. This way. And this way. This way and this way. Is that the right side up? Nope, it was upside down. <laughs> and then we're gonna take our four green strips and lay them just like this. Colored lights or all white lights on your Christmas tree. Now I'll know that this looks like a mess, but it's gonna all come together as soon as we start sewing together these pieces. There we go, there's the layout for all of your pieces for this block. Catechip, you leave your tree up all year round. I think my daughter, <laughs> I think she plans on leaving her tree up all year round too. She still has her Christmas tree up. She says it makes her happy, so if it makes her happy, then I'm all for it. Leave it up. <laughs> we went over there for dinner right before all of this shut-in happened. We went over to her house for dinner, and uh, she still had her Christmas tree up in the living room. She said it makes her happy when she sees it, so I'm all for it. Leave it up. Most of her decorating for Christmas will already be done. <laughs> I like the all white lights on my tree. Harlan likes the colored lights on the tree. Right? Doesn't this look like John Deere green? It looks like a John Deere quilt block. This is gonna go by pretty easy for today. Pretty easy for today. Gonna give y'all all a minute to lay out your pieces. I know several of you are making this block right along with me. Vicki, you took yours down to make room for sewing stuff. Is that what you did? Danetta says she would love to leave hers up, but the family won't let her. Hers usually goes up the weekend of Thanksgiving. All right, if you're making this quilt block, make sure your sewing machine is set to a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna start piecing together this block. It is uh, almost the same piecing as the Red Cross variation block. Do y'all remember doing that one? Same layout, different size block, different size pieces. <clears throat> We're gonna flip the yellow <clears throat> right onto the green. 
Ah, I got choked on my tea. Just like this. Just like that. And we're gonna sew these four units with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. White lights on your tree or colored lights on your tree? There's our first one. Second. Wow, it is just pouring down rain, pouring down. Third and our last block to sew together for this step. So now we have four little two patches. Let me wake up this iron. Hello. It's Thursday, time to wake up. I'm gonna cut these little units apart and let my iron heat up for a second. And then I'm gonna press each one of these and I'm pressing my units over to the darker green side. I'll press my seam right over to the green side. Hello, everybody. So great to see you. Thank you for spending part of your Thursday with me. Question number two. Do you prefer eggnog or hot chocolate? Hot cocoa. I think you have to have an acquired taste for eggnog, right? Harlan loves it. I'm not a huge fan. Eggnog or hot chocolate? We're going to press these two pieces nice and flat for each one of the units. There should be four. Remember when bringing them back, the yellow goes into the corner. This block, I'm thinking y'all are going to think this block is super easy today. So there we are with phase one of our block. We've made our two patches. Question number one, Suzanne, was uh, decorating your Christmas tree. Do you prefer white lights or colored lights? White lights or colored lights? Debbie, I do think eggnog French toast sounds delicious, but drinking eggnog itself, I'm not a huge fan of it. Not a huge fan of the eggnog. Just lining up all of my pieces. So great to see everybody today. So great to see you. So this or that number three. When you go shopping for Christmas presents, do you wrap your presents as soon as you get them and put them under the tree? Or do you wait till the last minute and wrap your presents and put them under the tree on Christmas? Eve or Christmas morning? Are you someone who wraps their gifts right away and puts them under the tree? 
kind of use them as part of the Christmas decorations, right? <laughs> or do you wrap everything at the last minute like I do? <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. I wait till the last minute. Moving on with the construction of this block, we're going to take our two patches and flip them right over onto the two and a half by four and a half inch green piece, just like this. And we're sewing the seam that connects both of them right there with a quarter inch seam allowance. Yes, every year I say, oh, I'm going to do it. Do it early so I'm not rushing to do everything right at Christmas. And every year I do the same exact thing. I wait to the last minute. <laughs> so there's our first unit. The second. Third, and we've got one more. And then we'll trim the little connecting threads between these units. And when I press these units open, I will be pressing my seam over to the green strip, just like that. Yep, I wait. I'm a procrastinator. And then I stress out at the last minute every single year. Every single year I say I'm going to do it different next year. And then I repeat the process year to year. <laughs> Bringing these units back. This is what we look like. There we go. I'm going to give everybody a chance to catch up. If you're sewing with me live today. Let's see, one, two, three, uh, this or that number four. This or that number four, Christmas movies. It's a Wonderful Life or a Christmas Story. You got those two to choose from. Which one would you watch? A Wonderful Life or a Christmas Story? I think it would depend on which kind of mood I'm in. <laughs> but 
Right now, I would watch The Christmas Story. <laughs> I do like It's a Wonderful Life, though. You got two movies to choose from. It's a Wonderful Life or the Christmas A Christmas Story. At this point, we have these four little units right in the four corners. We're going to go ahead and attach this as a row. We'll attach this middle section as a row. And then this section down here will become a row. I'm going to do a little bit of chain piecing. We're going to flip over the middle section right over to the first section just like this and we're going to sew all of these seams with a quarter inch seam allowance So there's the first seam. The second. And the third. While we are over here at the sewing machine, I'm going to go back up to this first section. I'm going to flip over the yellow little strip right in the middle and just finger press that down. And we're going to bring over the top section. We're going to lay it right in place and make sure that it's in the right direction. Then we're going to flip it over and sew that seam. Then we have this little middle section right here. I'm going to flip over the green square right in the middle. Just finger press that down and we're bringing over the middle yellow strip. We'll line up the raw edges and sew that seam. And on this last section at the bottom, let's flip over the yellow, finger press that down, bring in our last little patch, Make sure it's all going in the right direction. Then we'll flip it and sew it down. So now our quilt block will be in three sections just like this. Let's cut the connecting threads. There will be two of them. Just like that. Here's the top. The bottom. And the middle. When I press my seams this time, I'm going to be pressing my seams. Let's see. Let me think for a second. I'll be pressing my seams to the darker green. That way all of these seams will nest when I put these, this block together. And hopefully it'll help everything line up right in the middle with all of these seams. So when I press my seams, I'm going to put them over to the green side just like that. In the middle, 
they'll go this way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we're going to give everybody a chance to catch up. Nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to nickname this quilt block the John Deere quilt block <laughs> just because of the, the colors that I've used today. And here is our last section. Now I'm going to give everybody just a few minutes to catch up with me. Let's see. Which number is this? One, two, three, four. This or that number five for today. I want you to think about candy canes. Do you like a classic candy cane? The white and red that tastes like the peppermint? Or do you like some of the newer fruity candy canes that they've come out with? classic candy cane or a fruity candy cane. I'm going to tell you what, all of the different flavors of candy canes that they've come out with, Jolly Ranchers, Sour Patch Kids, Starburst, Jelly Belly, <laughs> chocolate. They have chocolate candy canes, chocolate flavored candy canes. They have candy canes that have gum in the center of them. Don, that's a good question. Unless maybe it's called a double V because if you turn it like this, this makes a little V. That was the only thing that I could think of as why they call this block the double V. Classic candy cane or a flavored fruity non-traditional candy cane. <laughs> Oh, dipping a classic candy cane in a hot chocolate. That sounds tasty. Yes, I always put candy canes on my Christmas tree too. The kids always love that. Oh, Donna says, when you sew the blocks, Lisa, they look just like a perfect picture of the iPad. Hmm. That's awesome. Ah, if you turn this block on point, it'll be a V, just like that. I like all the candy canes, but I'm amazed at all the different flavors that they've come out with the last couple of years. The Jolly Rancher ones, oh, those are so good. So at this point, we have two more seams left to sew together this block. Okay, we're gonna flip this middle section right over. Now, because I pressed my seams to the dark side, the green fabric, these seams are just going to lock in with one another. And hopefully, if I pay attention, these little points should be nice and lined up when we sew this block together. We're gonna to go ahead and sew this first seam. Make sure it stays nice and straight all the way down.
So there's our first seam. We have one more seam left to sew. So I'm going to go ahead and just press over, finger press that middle section down flat. And we're going to bring over this last section. I'm going to just make sure it's in the right direction before I flip it over. You never know if you turn it one way <laughs> and the transfer process. I'm going to lock those seams, match up the raw edge nice and pretty. I get halfway through and then I make sure the rest of that seam is lined up nice and pretty and then finish it up. All right, everybody, I'm going to press this block and then we'll do a great big reveal. Ah, oh, rain, rain, rain. This has been a rainy spring. I know the rain is necessary. I know it's necessary, but I've had enough. <laughs> it seems like it's rained more days than it has been sunny. All right, my John Deere block. The double V. Look how pretty those seams lined right up in the middle. Good job, Lisa. Good job. Good job. There we are. That's the finished double V quilt block. Sue Bonnet, Sue, and Sam. I'll write that down. I'm trying really hard not to use trademarked quilt blocks and to find a pattern to share with you for Sue Bonnet Sue. I'm thinking I would have to share someone's pattern and it's probably a paid pattern and uh, I wouldn't do that. So maybe I'll come up with something similar to that. My own design. Because I don't want to share someone's paid work. That's not good. <laughs> Honey wants to know, does anybody have a wool pressing mat? Those are so popular right now. Yes or no? Do you have a wool pressing mat? Connie would love to hear from you. Oh, the sour watermelon. Yes. It does look like a cross in the middle, right? Debbie says, we need another applique block. I'll see what I can do about that, Miss Debbie. Sometimes I feel bad about doing the applique blocks because not everybody has a printer. <laughs> not everybody is able to print. So sometimes I feel really bad about offering those as part of the series. But, you know, with the times being the way they are, more than likely those of you without printers know somebody who has one who could print it out for you, right? So great to see everybody. So great to see you. So 
Susan, I will check for free versions of the Sue Bonnet Sue. I'll check for free ones. That would be the way that we have to go. Sherry says Sue Bonnet Sue is a free pattern, so no copyright infringement. Awesome. I'll look into it. Wanda, you're having issues with your thread this morning on your sewing machine. I saw a little while ago your needle came unthreaded. <laughs> some days are like that, aren't they? Some days just go perfectly, and then some days, ooh, it's a struggle. Cheryl says uh, she has two of the mats, and she loves using them for pressing cotton. Oh, my double V is in the yellow. Okay. Like that. <laughs> v, V, is that right? Mimsy, you want to do a Trapanto block? I think that would be a great idea for like a video video. I think that would take me forever to do live. <laughs> I love the look of Trapanto. I love it. So this is our finished quilt block for today. I think that was super easy, right? Super easy. I could see where you could do lots of pre-cutting, getting all of your pieces cut out, and then just spend some quality sewing time at your machine and knock out several of these blocks at one time, right? They go together pretty easy. Yes, they do. Now, before I ask uh, the last this or that, I do want to switch over to tomorrow's block. So those of you who are taking notes or uh, sewing with me live, you'll have a chance to get tomorrow's pieces and get those cut out for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing goose tracks. Goose tracks. This is also going to be a 10 inch quilt block. You're gonna need three colors of fabric. I'll be using red, white, and blue for tomorrow's quilt block. And these are all of the pieces and their sizes here on the screen. <clears throat> Our last this or that question for today, real tree or artificial tree? Do you prefer a real tree or an artificial tree? Harlan prefers a real tree. I prefer an artificial tree. <laughs> We did break down last year and get an artificial tree, uh, but all of the years before that, we had a live tree. Sherry, you love tomorrow's block. Yeah, the goose tracks. That's pretty, right? Let me show you an example of this block as a quilt. Now, I've done it two different ways. Set in rows. And then I've also set it on points so that you could see an example of both different layouts with the same quilt block. I agree. I agree. The artificial tree is so much easier <laughs> and much cleaner. We had a real tree for six or seven years in a row. And they're pretty high maintenance. Excuse me. They're pretty high maintenance. And you got to clean up every day the needles and make sure it's got water. Oh, goodness. Something's making me sneeze. So that's pretty fantastic, right? Yeah, I think that's going to be a fun quilt block for tomorrow.
Thank you so much <laughs> for the bless you's. Something's giving me the sneezes. I really wish it would stop raining. I don't want to go in the rain to the grocery store. <laughs> That is really neat, though, Kim, that y'all go out into your woods and you get a tree from the woods. I think that's a lovely idea. Perfect for a Hallmark movie, right? <laughs> oh, y'all are so welcome. It's been a lot of fun today. Today's block was super easy, right? It went together really quick, too. Tomorrow, the Goose Tracks block. I'll take that off the screen. There you go. Tomorrow's block is number 39. Can y'all believe we've almost made 40 quilt blocks? <laughs> That's a lot. Y'all are so welcome. God bless you as well. Yes, each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. Today's video feels like it just flew right by. Feels like it just flew right by. Forty-two minutes. Yeah, we're kind of early today. Usually our videos have been going about an hour. Bye, Miss Chantel. Have a lovely afternoon. Me too, Beverly. I've enjoyed every single minute of every single one of the videos. Diane, it's your first time chatting. Welcome to the chat. I'm so glad you're joining in. I'm so glad you're joining in. You're catching us towards the end of today's block, but I'm so glad that you made it. I know, you cannot believe. Uh, today makes 38 quilt blocks. That's crazy. That is crazy. 38 quilt blocks. So, uh, you know, if this is your first time watching, all the blocks you see behind me, there's a video for each and every one of them. In the description box is a link to the playlist. You can click on that and scroll through and see all of the videos all in one place. I did, uh, I did, remember to put the link in the description box finally for the playlist. So if you're struggling finding out where all these videos are, open up the description box and there's a link that brings you right to all of the blocks. I think I forgot to add yesterday's to the playlist. So I have a note to do that as soon as we're done. So great to see everybody. So great to see you. Don, yeah, I thought we would do a Zoom on the Creative Crew group. Not quite sure if it's going to be in the afternoon or evening. I have to venture out to the grocery store. I have to do it. It has to be done. <laughs> It'll probably be this evening. Diane, you say it's not a link, though? Do you mean the link in the description box for the playlist? A bee or a turtle block? Miss Angel, I'm trying to really focus on traditional blocks. So if there's a bee or turtle traditional block, then I will take a look at it.
before we go, let me check out this. Uh, all right, I can't get link to playlist to work. Hold on a second. Oh, yep, I messed it up. <laughs> I didn't put the link in there. My bad. As soon as we're done, as soon as we're done, I'll come back and I'll fix that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That won't be the last time I mess up, y'all. I do order groceries online, Angel, from the Walmart. But I'm going to tell you, the last time I did that, they canceled half of my order because half of the stuff, you know, the stores are really weird right now. So then I still had to venture out to another store to get half of the things that Walmart didn't have. So I'm just going to go myself and pick up stuff. But when things are normal, I love ordering my groceries online and going to do a pickup. Thank you, Barbara. Vicki, you have to go to the store too, and you don't want to join the group. Join the club. I don't want to do it either. Cheryl says, do you have anything in a Baby Yoda block or know how I can do these? I don't have any Baby Yoda patterns, but... Uh, if you go to Etsy and you type in the search bar Baby Yoda patterns, I bet you you'll find some, or maybe not, because the like Baby Yoda is sort of trademarked, right? I don't know. I don't know how all that works. So I try to stay away from all of the things like Superman and Batman. All of that stuff is trademarked. There might be some out there, though, that you can find. 3D Buildings Block. Is that a traditional, like, way? I'll look into it. If it's a traditional quilt block, we'll, we'll look into it. Carol, your little town still doesn't have that at your Walmart? Doris says that at this time, Aldi's is the only one who you can do a pickup with. I spend a lot less when I order online too, Cheryl. I do. <laughs> I'm an impulse buyer. So when I go in the store, if I am hungry at all, I end up spending way much more money than I should have. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. You're so welcome. I'll look into a 3D block, y'all. If it's a traditional quilt block, we'll look at adding it to this series. I already have several blocks already lined up, but that gives me some time to do some research. All right, everybody. Let me switch over. Here's our finished double V quilt block. It's pretty. I'm calling it my John Deere quilt block. It's got a nickname. I look forward to putting that up on the wall with all of the other blocks. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing goose tracks. Goose tracks. I think tomorrow's video will be a lot longer than today's or a little bit longer. <laughs> I've enjoyed uh, spending time with you. And I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Do something relaxing for yourself today. Do something creative. 
some of us, we just, it takes everything in the afternoons. It takes everything I have just to muster a little bit of energy to do something creative. But once I force myself to do it, I have so much fun and I enjoy myself. So if you have to kick yourself in the hiney to get going, let's do that. Let's do something creative today. Uh, Carol, how is the Zoom meeting different than the regular Facebook Live? Before we go, before we go, I'll answer Carol's question. The Zoom, Zoom is fun, okay? Uh, the Zoom is over on the Creative Crew Facebook group. And I post a link to our Creative Crew, and then uh, you join in, and you hook up your webcam so I can see you. And you can see me and we can talk to each other just like I'm talking to you now. We can have conversations. Sometimes it's just a couple of us there. Sometimes it's a whole room full of people. And uh, we talk about our day. We talk about our projects. Sometimes we hold up something that we did for the day. Say, see what I did today? <laughs> uh yeah, and we just get to see faces and have conversation like we're all in the same room. Why not alternate the patterns? Miss Marjorie, I, would, I love applique, but there's so many traditional quilt blocks that are piecework. I am pushing myself out of my comfort zone by doing some piecework. And uh, as much as I love to do applique, it's harder for some who don't have their printers, especially this day and time where we're all supposed to stay home. They can't just go down to the library and print it out or easily go to their friend's house and have them print it. It's kind of a, it's a little bit more complicated, but we'll see about doing some applique. You could do it with uh, your cell phone, Zoom. If you have a cell phone that's got a camera on it, many people use their iPad. And then some have a webcam on their computers. So there's several different ways that you could join the Zoom. It's a lot of fun. It really is. All right, everybody. I hope you have a blessed day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great afternoon.